Where did he go? By Dr. Earl White. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. What a blessing it is to serve the Lord. If you could really walk with the Lord, there are very few dull moments. These verses describe the occasion of the Lord's ascension. I know the Lord had told them this would happen, but we have all had we all have a hard time understanding on the first go around. Here Jesus stands talking to them, and all of a sudden Luke tells us, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld he was taken up. He had just taught one final lesson in his resurrection resurrected body to his disciples, and while they beheld this this means to see with the I, with the bodily eye, it is a present tense word which which means while they continued to see with the bodily eye, the words he was taken up describes what happened while they looked. This happened right before their eyes. They will be questioned at length about this in the future. Nothing just like this has ever happened before. There will be so many who will doubt this story. They needed the drama of this scene so that they could tell it in a convincing way. The gospel is not only the death of Jesus, but it is also the resurrection and ascension of Christ. The words, he was taken up, it means to lift up, raise up, raise on high. It is an aorist passive indicative verb. The aorist tense refers to the fact and occasion of his ascension. The passive voice means that the Father took him. It could have said he went back to the Father's house or he went up to heaven and put it in the active voice. He had the power to do so, but it is not the active voice. It is the passive voice, which means he... As the subject of this clause is the recipient of the act, it suggests that this final service that he was sent to do with the disciples on this earth was finished, and the father reached down and said, Son, it's time to continue your ministry from my right hand. One of these days, the Lord is going to say that to the church, and we will take our flight, amen. So, Even so, come Lord Jesus. The words, and a cloud received him out of their sight, gives us the physical explanation of his disappearance from their vision. As they stood watching this scene, God sent two angels to give them added support and message. The angels said, according to the verse 11, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The word gazing means to turn one's eye. It is a present tense and means they were just gazing up to the place where they had last seen him. I think they must have said, Where did he go? The angel said, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The Lord is so good. He told them where he went and where he is. And when he told them this, he told us. He has also told us some things about his ascension. Where did he go? He went to take up his ministry as high priest. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. 
He is exercising his ministry as high priest today. In Hebrews 3 verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Hebrews 4.15 For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. This high priest represents us. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities and goes before us the goes before the presence of a holy God on the grounds of those feelings toward us and his own shed blood and his own holy life he represents us there and he and his representation is accepted And his acceptance is our acceptance. Where did he go? He went to intercede. Hebrews 7.25 Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. The word intercession means to go or to meet a person, especially for the purpose of conversation, consultation, or supplication. These words describe what Jesus was received into heaven to do. He went to the cross on our behalf. He died our death for us. Now he is in the presence of God interceding for us. He is there to carry on a conversation for us. He is there to consult for us. He is there to supplicate for us. This verse also says, wherefore he is able, and the word able means in inherent power or ability, by virtue of the fact that, that he is truly man and truly God, and has satisfied God's holiness and justice in man's behalf by dying on the cross, and has provided perfect righteousness, he is able to represent man. Man is accepted in the beloved. We see that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. Where did he go? He went to be our mediator. 1 Timothy 2 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. The word mediator means one who intervenes between two, either in order to make or restore peace and friendship, or form a compact, or for ratifying a covenant. This describes what Jesus is doing for us in heaven right now. God has made a covenant with man. Man could not meet the conditions of that covenant. So Jesus became a man. God incarnate in the flesh. And as man met every condition that God required of man, Jesus, as a man, is in heaven in behalf of every believer and stands as the mediator of that covenant to make it sure. He went to heaven to be our mediator, the one mediator between God and man. Where did he go? He went to rest in his finished work, Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his majesty, uh, by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is the first high priest that ever sat down. The reason is that their work was never finished. Jesus is not working. He is not working today to finish what he started on earth. He is resting in his finished work. He intercedes on the grounds of a finished work. When I accepted Christ as my Savior, I received the finished work as the ground of my acceptance before the throne. There is not a chance that those for for whom he intercedes will not be accepted. His work is finished, and and it is demonstrated by the fact that he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Where did he go? He went to wait until his enemies are made to bow under his feet. 1 Corinthians 
25 through 26 says, For he must reign till he hath pat till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Jesus is in heaven waiting. I believe the long wait is about over. He will be coming soon. He is there waiting and we wait with him until the Father brings the last act to pass. Then this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I am going to have to say someone hold my mules while I shout for the new ones that are on my mailing list that have never heard this story. I'll have to tell it again one of those days and you will know what I'm talking about when I say someone hold my mules. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless these words to our hearts today. Complete in me, no work of mine Could take, dear Lord, the place of thine Thy blood hath poured and bought for me shall stand complete in thee, yea, justified, O blessed thy